It was former U.S. Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld who once said that there are no knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns. It was a clumsy way of saying that there are things we know, things we know that we don't know, and things that we're unaware of not knowing. The latter category could describe everything you're about to see in this video. They're things we didn't know to exist until we found them, and we're still unsure about them now. The Mokui Marbles take their name from a belief that the Hopi Native Americans who live in Utah, USA have about them. The word Mokui translates into English as departed one. They believe that the spirits of the dead return to the world at night, but leave when the sun comes up. As they depart, they leave behind one of these marble-like objects as proof they were here. It's a lovely story, but the truth is likely to be more scientific. The probable cause of the marbles is an ironstone concretion process that began around 25 million years ago as groundwater flowed through permeable rock and began a chain of chemical reactions. Over time, minerals formed layers around the iron cores of each marble. Over even more time, the external sandstone layers of the marbles were weathered away to expose the polished-looking concretions within. There are millions of them gathered on Native American reservations in the Utah desert, where it's a criminal offense to remove them from the area because of their spiritual connection to the people. Tourists are welcome to look, but they shouldn't touch. Why is there a rock on a mountain in Hubei, China that looks like a textbook movie or comic book depiction of an alien flying saucer? We wish we knew, but there's no doubt that it exists. The stone was first noticed in 2018 by a villager from Changyang. He immediately realized it could be valuable and somehow managed to convince the local forest protection authorities to sell it to him. Since then, he claims to have turned down offers as high as 15,000 US dollars to purchase it from him. The curious stone weighs more than six tons and is divided into three layers the bottom layer of which features pillars that support the rest of the structure. Archaeologists in China aren't sure what to make of the structure. They've ruled out the idea that it was deliberately made to look like a UFO, but they think it might be an ancient altar. There are some scientists who believe the rock might have formed naturally, but the design and layout of the pillars make this unlikely. Thus far, nobody's been able to suggest an age for the curious sculpture but it's safe to say that it's well over 1,000 years old. Walking through the giant crystal cave of Nica, Mexico feels like setting foot on an alien planet. Unfortunately, nobody's been able to take that walk since 2017. The caves flooded that year, and the water hasn't subsided since. The caves were found accidentally by a mining company in 1910. The miners nicknamed it the Cave of Swords, because of the length of the gypsum crystals that form crisscross patterns in the cavern, some 400 feet below ground. Nine decades later, another mining project revealed the presence of a separate cavern below the first one. The crystals in this new cave made those in the Cave of Swords look like toothpicks. Most of them are over 30 feet long, weighing over 50 tons. Amazingly, this isn't even their final form. The crystals are still growing. This far below the ground, the air temperature is 50 degrees Celsius, with a humidity level of 90%. Even with special equipment, humans can't spend more than 45 minutes in the caves before returning to the surface. The crystals are a beautiful thing to see, but you can't stay and admire them for very long, even when the caves aren't flooded. What are we to make of this unusual artwork inside the Medici chapels of Florence, Italy? The sculptures depict human torsos and human battle armor, but the creatures inside them are decidedly not human. The most famous and bizarre example is a sculpture showing the head of a creature that's been interpreted as either a worm or a serpent emerging from the top of an ancient suit of armor. Other examples in the same gallery show tentacle-like shapes covered in scales or suckers occupying spaces where we should find human arms or legs. Many of the statues are surrounded by heraldic emblems and reliefs, occasionally accompanied by helmets. 
Some of the more outlandish theories about the statues include the idea that the ancient Romans built exoskeletons for animals, but that's considered to be unlikely. It's technically possible, but historians see no reasons for the Romans to do such a thing. It's more likely that the sculptures have a symbolic meaning which has been lost to time. The Romans documented every aspect of their culture extensively, though, so it seems odd that we have no explanation of this strange phenomenon. The coins created by brilliant Russian designer Roman Boutin may not always be legal tender, but they're worth thousands of dollars to collectors. The steelworking genius has used everything from Zippo lighters to scrap metal to create ornate and unique coins. And this take on an old Morgan silver dollar might be his best work. Entitled The Trap with Golden Bait, Bootin has taken a 1945 minted golden 2 peso Mexican coin, placed it in the middle of his money sculpture, and surrounded it with a distorted 1900 silver dollar, which has been altered to feature a rounded base. When the gold coin is pressed upon, the steel jaws of the trap Bootin has laid around it close. Bootin has made dozens of pieces just like this, and likes to call them hobo coins, although they don't attract hobo prices. The trap with golden bait sold for more than $10,000 on eBay. That seems to be at odds with the Latin inscription Bootin has printed on the coin, which translates as, gold has claimed more souls than iron. Disfiguring currency like this is technically illegal, but thus far, Roman has managed to avoid being arrested. The El Peru Huaca archaeological site in Guatemala is one of the most important treasure troves of information about the Maya in all of South America. Among the most fascinating discoveries made at the site are a collection of 1,500-year-old ceramic figurines, some of which are so ornate and detailed that they even have removable helmets. We think of objects like these as children's toys today, but they probably had a far more significant spiritual meaning to the ancient Mayans. A collection of 23 such figurines was found inside a vaulted masonry tomb chamber inside a funerary pyramid, which is thought to have been built for a former ruler of Waka. They were carefully arranged in a circle at the time of their discovery. One of the figures is a deer with the letter T carved into its surface, identifying the deer as the ruler's spirit companion. Other figures include a warrior queen, dancers, scribes, and another male figure who might represent the king's heir. We might never know the meaning of the arrangement or the function of the figurines in it, but it was clearly very significant to whoever put them here. You'll find various takes on the idea of an enchanted forest all over the world, but perhaps none quite so special as the enchanted forest of Whitethorn in California, USA. There's little more to the forest than a grove of so-called candelabra redwoods, but a combination of the spectacular scenery and the fact that the forest is deep within California's lost coast seems to create magic for the many visitors that come to see it each year. Much of the surrounding forest has been cleared by logging, some of which was legal and some of which wasn't. But this strange set of redwood trees is such a striking sight that even the cowboy loggers couldn't bring themselves to chop them down. Nobody knows what caused the trees to take on this appearance, but it might have something to do with the salty ocean air and the strong winds that blast through the trees from the ocean. The trees have fractured more times than anyone can count, and yet they're still alive. It's not hard to see why they're called candelabra trees. The trunks of the trees are too twisted to be of any use to a lumber mill, so it's likely that they'll remain safe even if the loggers return. During the 6th, 7th, and 8th centuries, the height of fashion for women in Scandinavia was to wear a disc on bow brooch. These beautiful pieces of jewelry were intricately gilded and showcased hand-picked red garnet gemstones from far-flung places like India and Sri Lanka. We know that the brooches were exclusively worn by women because they've only ever been found in women's graves. There might have been more to wearing these accessories than simply wanting to look good, though. 
There are signs that some of them were worn continuously for more than a century, suggesting that they were passed down through the generations from one woman to the next. Some experts have hypothesized that the complex patterns and images etched into the brooches might even contain coded information about the family history of the brooch's owner. Some of the disc on bow brooches even contain depictions of women wearing disc on bow brooches, almost like a jewelry-based version of the film Inception. If there is information encoded within the artifacts, historians have not yet been able to crack the code. Still, that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Why on earth is there a carving of an astronaut on the wall of a 16th century Spanish cathedral? That's a very good question, so let's take a look at it. You can see the carving very clearly on the wall of the Cathedral of Salamanca, also known as Catedral Nueva. There's no doubt that the cathedral has been standing since the 16th century. But there's also no doubt that this is a carving of an astronaut. You can clearly see the ridges in his space boots, his backpack, and the oxygen attachments of his spacesuit. Fringe theorists have suggested that anything from time travel to ancient astronaut visitation might explain the presence of the spaceman. But the truth is probably something far more banal. At the end of the 20th century, the cathedral was in dire need of restoration work, but had little money to perform the work with, so it asked for volunteers. One of the volunteers is believed to have decided to leave a little something for people to remember him by in the cathedral, and so he carved the astronaut. This seems to be the most likely explanation, but we have two questions. Why did nobody notice what he was doing at the time, and why did nobody notice the astronaut until several years after the work was allegedly done? Ancient Roman villas aren't exactly hard to come by in Italy, but few are more stunning than the Villa of the Papyri. Named for its enormous collection of paper scrolls, the villa is thought to have been the largest and most luxurious in all of Herculaneum prior to the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in the year 79. The eruption was a disaster for the city, but the lava flows and ash turned out to be the perfect preservative. When archaeologists eventually rediscovered the Villa of the Papyri in 1750 by digging tunnels through almost 100 feet of volcanic material, they found that its incredible frescoes, marble sculptures, and bronzes were almost entirely undamaged. Even the 1800 or so papyrus scrolls are still present and correct, albeit carbonized by the intense heat of the disaster. Only a senior member of the Roman elite could have lived here, which has prompted speculation that this may once have been the home of Lucius Calpurnius Piso Caesoninus. He was Julius Caesar's father-in-law. Scientists have spent the past few years attempting to unwrap and read the carbonized scrolls without touching them by using 3D scanners and other technology. But progress is slow, and we still don't have any complete transcripts. Archaeologists have seen maps of the night sky represented in dozens of different ways by our ancient ancestors. The liver of Piacenza is probably the most unique of all those representations. This is a 2,200-year-old artifact created by the ancient Etruscans, of whom we have comparatively little knowledge. Although they once dominated most of what's now Italy, their whole cultural identity, including their language, was assimilated into the Roman Empire as it spread. Because of that, we've lost our understanding of their history and culture, and along with it, our ability to decipher artifacts as bizarre as this one. It's a map of the night sky inscribed all over the surface of what appears to be a sculpture of a sheep's liver. We know that the Etruscans used animal entrails and ceremonies that were supposed to help them predict the future, so perhaps that unpleasant practice is somehow connected to this odd work of art. The liver of Piacenza was a puzzle when it was first discovered in 1877 and remains a puzzle today. For such a small object, measuring no more than 5 inches in length, it's a big mystery. The four golden hats of the Bronze Age are very unique, very strange artifacts. 
The long, conical, elaborately decorated hats have been interpreted by some as witches' hats, but that's unlikely to have been their intended purpose. However, that doesn't mean that the people who made them didn't believe that they had magic qualities. The symbols on the sides of the artifacts certainly appear to have either astronomical or agricultural connections, so the people who wore them might have been trusted to make predictions about the weather or the future in general. All four of the hats were created somewhere between 3,400 and 2,800 years ago. Three of them were found in Germany, and the fourth was found in France. It's unlikely that they're the only hats of their kind that were ever made, so it's possible that more will be found by archaeologists in the years to come. The similarities between the objects are so strong that it's reasonable to assume that they served similar purposes, despite being separated by both time and geography. As for what that purpose might have been, though, your guess is as good as ours. The best preserved and best known of the artifacts is now called the Berlin Gold Hat and can be found in the Neues Museum in Germany's capital city. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!